Well, let's talk about genetics. Can you look at a brain of somebody and tell if they're going to become an addict? It's different from eye color or height, which you're born with brown eyes. You'll have brown eyes for life. Uh, the genetics that underlie common chronic disease, whether it's psychiatric disease or diabetes and asthma, is much more complex. And what we're talking about are genes that confer a risk for an illness, not a deterministic uh, surety that they will get that illness. So, for example, the genetic risk for addictions is about 50%. That's really heritable. That's more heritable than high cholesterol, high blood pressure. What do you mean by 50%? 50, 50 Half of the risk for addiction is genetic. Really? Yes. And what is it, what, what is it for cancer or for For many heart cancers, disease? it's even less than 50%. Huh. So addiction is actually pretty genetic. The challenge is, is that unlike something, uh, for example, Huntington disease, which is caused by an abnormality in a single gene, and if you have that abnormal copy of the gene, you will get Huntington's disease with 100% assurance. That's not the case in addiction, because only half of the risk is genetic, and the rest depends on all sorts of other things. And we are coming to realize that it's not like with Huntington, where you identify a gene and you know you're going to develop the disease. But what we're understanding is that these genes are influencing the way that the brain develops and ultimately functions. So the risk that they are imposing has to do with the fact that your brain will be responding to an environmental insult in a different way. One of the one most investigated is, for example, a gene that gives you, that modifies the way that the amygdala, which is a limbic area, responds to stress. Mm. So if you have this gene that is a high-risk gene, it will make you much more vulnerable to depression, but only if you are in a stressful environment. The same thing, for example, since now it's so much in the news, the association between certain people taking marijuana and then developing schizophrenia. What now is coming to realize is that if you have a certain gene which is, has a, a risk allele that makes you more vulnerable to schizophrenia, if you smoke marijuana, then can accelerate the process. So we are understanding genes as influencing the risk, and this is not just for drug addiction, for all of the mental diseases, uh, for basically most of them, but even for many of the medical diseases, such as diabetes or obesity. You may have a gene that creates a vulnerability, but if you don't expose to the environmental insult, mm -hmm. it will never happen, which is from the policy perspective and from the healthcare perspective, very important, because it doesn't mean you are predestined to develop the disease, but you can actually do interventions that can um, help that individual, that can protect that person from the development of these conditions. So